Welcome back to On The Loose TV. I am Janice Kovach and you're watching Mayor On The Loose. We are here at the Pines Manor. Mayor Tony Rosigliano of Edison Township is hosting a fundraiser honoring women of Middlesex County. And sitting with me are two of the honorees. We have Senator Loretta Weinberg on my left and we have Lisa Mizrahi Cato of the Women's Political Caucus on my right. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the role of women. We're getting ready for Women's History Month in March. And Senator, you talked a little bit on the stage about, you know, what you've been able to accomplish, but yet there's still such a long way to go. Yeah, uh, well, there's a long way to go because of the steps backwards that we've taken over the last uh, three or four years uh, with defunding of women's health issues, of women not, uh, poor women not getting access to birth control, getting access to basic health care. We've lost six family planning centers in New Jersey since this governor came in. And why did we lose, why did they close? Because the governor used his red veto pen and vetoed every dollar that went to family planning centers in New Jersey. He, in fact, was the first governor to actually eliminate that money from, our, from a state budget. There were other states that never had money in there, so we're excluding those. But this is the only governor where a state always had money in there, and he just vetoed all of the money. So these are, are uh, the planning, uh, family planning centers very often around college campuses, they're the place, w places where young women go for basic health care, for cervical cancer screening, for I issues around mammograms, as well as birth control. And uh, I think that women, that part of their basic right is to decide when and how many children they want, and when and with their uh, families, when they want those children. With that access to birth control, uh, that, um, uh, really, uh, really undermines women's health and undermines young women in our state. So there's a lot we have to work out. I'm hoping we'll do it maybe by having a woman governor who will understand those issues uh, more clearly. And uh, it's a never-ending battle. We look at the national scene. The Violence Against Women Act has not been reauthorized in the House of Representatives, something that was done regularly every year for many, many years. Along with Senator Nia Gill, we had to sponsor uh, some, uh, a bill to get some bridge funding for organizations in New Jersey that counsel women, domestic violence, child abuse, et cetera, that always got money from the Federal Violence Against Women Act. Congress hasn't passed it yet. So in many ways, with all the battles we fought and won over the last number of years, over the last generations, I feel like we've stepped backwards somehow. And it's very disconcerting, but we need women to, who will stand up, articulate, and continue the, uh, the fight to make sure that all of our women are protected. I agree. I think one of the things I struggle with um, and Lisa, I think you've talked about this too, is that 167 years after the very first women's convention at Seneca Falls, and we're still talking about some of the same issues. Um, you know, Lisa, you talked a little bit about it up on stage when you were being honored as well. So what are some of your thoughts? I think it all comes down to representation and having a voice and having the power to participate in making the decisions that affect all of our lives. Um, you cannot be a full and active and equal participant in any process if you do not have first have dominion over your own body, if you do not have access to the same resources that others have, pay equity, health care, education. Women are always, always getting the short end of the stick. So how, how do we change the political landscape? What are some of the steps you know, we do our part, but how can we get others, especially younger women, to get involved? Well, uh, I think we have to continue mentoring. We have to continue being role models. We've got to continue supporting each other as we're doing here tonight. We're, some of us travel from 
out of town to uh, support a sister woman elected official. And it was fun for me to see uh, other uh, women elected officials here, like Mayor Wilder Diaz, whom I went to a press conference a number of months ago to support her. She won her election. And when I ran for lieutenant governor back in 2009, these were the same women who were out came out to greet me when it wasn't so po when I, when I was running with John Corzon and it wasn't such a popular idea even in our party. So uh, I am happy to see them in office and I'll do anything and everything that I can to uh, continue supporting women. And we have a the first Democratic woman candidate for governor this year. Uh, interesting, we've had one female governor in, I guess, New Jersey's history. Uh, Christy Whitman happened to be a Republican. But when I was up on stage, I read a quote from a Republican assemblywoman who talked about the, re the importance of women uh, representing as well as being represented. She was a Republican assemblywoman in 1922. And when I think of all these years later, I don't know what she'd say about her own party right now, but all these years later, we're talking about some of the same issues that Assemblywoman Pamela Francisco was trying to talk about back in 1922. It is a little bit uh, disconcerting. I agree. Lisa, the caucus is doing a lot around education and training at the national level, and, and you're working also at the state level. What are some of the, the initiatives that are gonna be coming up? Well, I'm working not only with the caucus, you know, I'm vice president for education and training for the National Women's Political Caucus, so I'm doing political campaign training across the country. But as a private citizen, I'm also working here in Edison with Mayor Tony Visigliano to do a civic education program for high schoolers here in Edison. We'll be launching that within the next couple of weeks. We're really excited about it. It's really important to demystify the process and demystify government. Young people need to learn how government works, how to advocate for their own interests and for the issues that affect their communities. And they need to learn how to do that effectively. And we can help them to do that by giving them the tools, by training them, by giving the confidence to, to be willing to go put themselves out there. There's no they, you know, they are not gonna fix it for you. They are not gonna take care of things. You need to be an active participant in your democratic government. And I think young people are really key. We don't do a great job of civic education in this country, as far as I can see. And um, I'm not waiting for somebody else to take care of it anymore. I, you know, Tony and I had a conversation about the importance of educating our young people, and we're going forward with an initiative to do that. And I hope that we'll, it's, the pilot will be in Edison this spring, and we're hoping to expand the program to other cities in the state next fall and over the next, you know, the course of the next year. We'll be looking forward to it. Thank you both for being here with me and you are watching Mayor on the Loose.